Hello, I'm Bob Beale. I'm here with Dr. Helen Swarbrick from the UNSW School of Optometry and Vision Science. Helen's a specialist in contact lenses, and uh, you've been working in a, in a really interesting area known as orthokeratology, which is quite a mouthful, OK for, for short. So the, what are OK lenses? OK is a clinical procedure, and it is being done out there in the real world at the moment. Um, it uses specially designed rigid contact lenses that reshape the cornea. Now the cornea is the most highly refractive or powerful part of the eye that focuses light on the retina. And so we don't have to change its shape very much and we can have a big effect on the optics of the eye. Oh, that's it. So the cornea is the part at the, at the front? The, ver the front window of the eye. So how do, how do these contact lenses differ in shape from a normal contact lens? Well, they're rigid for a start, so they act like a mould and they flatten the central part of the cornea slightly to reduce corneal power. And the effect is that when you remove the contact lens, the corneal power is reduced and this uh, corrects short-sightedness or myopia. Right, so how long do you have to do you wear these during the day? No, uh, the current way in which they're worn is overnight wear only. So you put the lenses in before you go to sleep and in the morning you take the lenses out, they've done their job in moulding the cornea and you can go throughout the day without the need to wear glasses or contact lenses wow, to see clearly. Big, uh, how does this compare with say laser surgery because we read a lot about, see a lot of ads for people saying we can correct your vision with laser surgery, is, is this better, worse, cheaper? It's a very similar effect that we're aiming for. Laser surgery also um, uh, flattens or, or reduces the power of the cornea but it does it by removing tissue. And as such, it's irreversible. So once it's done, it's there, which is great. But it does mean that it is limited to people who have fairly stable vision, therefore not suitable, for example, for children. Uh, laser surgery is not performed on children. Mm -hmm. And also there's a lot of adults who just feel a little bit anxious about the idea of having surgery done on their eyes for a permanent change. Um, and so orthokeratology is completely reversible. If the person you just stop wearing the you lenses. just stop wearing the lenses and the cornea goes back to its original shape. So do you have to wear them every night? Most people do, and it tends to depend on the amount of short sightedness. So if you've got a higher amount of short sightedness, really you probably need to wear the lenses every night. But in young children who tend to get a, a much greater effect from the lenses and tend to have lower degrees of myopia. Often every second night, some children get away with wearing them every third night and still retain the effect. Mm. So how quickly does this have an effect? If, if, I, if I was short-sighted and put some of these lenses in and took them out again three hours later, would I notice any difference? Yes, you certainly would. Indeed, the effect comes on very, very quickly. We've measured uh, changes in the shape of the cornea within 10 minutes of putting the lenses on. Ten minutes? Ten minutes. Wow. It's a very rapid effect. Um, after a single overnight wear of these lenses, about 75% of the effect is there. And we normally consider that after a, a week of, of overnight wear, you've got the full correction. Mm -hmm. Does it, does it feel painful? Do you feel pressure on your eye from these things? No, they're remarkably comfortable and there's two reasons for that. Firstly, they're quite a large lens, so they don't move very much on the eye and a lot of the irritation that comes from contact lenses is the movement on the eye. The second is that they're worn during eye closure and so you're not blinking on the lens and so the irritation that arises from the eyelid margin interacting with the edge of the lens on every blink is not there. Mm. The lenses are surprisingly comfortable during sleep. Most people have no difficulty sleeping with them in. Mm. And, and each lens is made for each individual person? Yes, yes. We uh, determine the design based on the individual person's corneal shape and also the amount of correction that is required. Mm -hmm. So um, this is not just an interesting bit of, of technical stuff, is it? Because there, there is a, a, a huge increase in myopia in some parts of the world, isn't there? Short-sightedness. Yes, yes. And one of the more interesting things that's emerged from the use of orthokeratology is that if we use this technique on children, it has interesting optical effects out in the edges of vision, which seem to act to slow down the progression of myopia. We've just finished a big study in which we've been able to demonstrate a highly significant effect that if children wear these lenses and their myopia is progressing, the myopia just stops in its tracks 
when they're wearing these lenses. So it's like a cure? Well, it, it will not reverse any myopia that they may um, already have, but it may well hold it where it is rather than allowing it to progress over the following so years. So what, what happens if, if the myopia progresses? Well, if, if there's no control over myopia, what we're seeing at the moment, particularly in East Asia, particularly in people of Chinese ethnicity, is that myopia nowadays seems to be starting at a younger age, progressing more rapidly and ending up with a higher degree of myopia. Now, myopia is essentially a very large eyeball. And when you stretch an eyeball, over time this can have implications for the back of the eye, for the retina. So high levels of myopia are associated with various eye diseases, particularly eye diseases that arise from a thinning and stretching of the retina, which of course is the layer of the eye which receives the light signals and allows us to see. Mm. So if we can intervene and keep myopia at a lower level, we reduce the risks of these eye diseases in later life. Mm. Can you just give me some idea of how prevalent myopia has become in, in those East Asian countries that you mentioned? Oh, there's certainly statistics now that are showing teenage children have myopia at a rate of about 80% or more of the population. This is an enormous increase, and it's just within a generation. Well, eight out of every 10 kids is, is short sighted. Short sighted, yes. And what was that a generation ago? Uh, that would have been closer to the 30% level. That's about normal. Yes, level. 25, 30 is about what we find in other parts of the, do, of the world. Do we understand why that change has happened in just one generation? It's a really interesting area of research, and, and, and really uh, there is an enormous effort worldwide going into this at the moment. There's various theories being tested to try and determine. Is it genetics? Well, probably not in a generation. So it's got to be something environmental. Um, and current theories are looking at the idea that the type of society and the amount of close work that children, particularly in the East Asian region, are doing these days may well play a role in this. Close work, you mean reading books, looking at computer screens, okay. TVs? Absolutely. And indeed, one of the more interesting things to emerge just in the last couple of years is that children who ha uh, in indulge in greater outdoor activity um, have lower degrees of myopia. It appears to have a, a protective effect. It's not just playing games or being physical outside, it's being outside in an environment where you can see far away. Mm. Um, so th it's interesting, we find that here in Australia, here in Sydney, we have one of the lowest myopia prevalence rates in the world. Maybe it is because our kids are outdoors so much. Mm. Okay, so the work you've been doing on, on myopia is, is now well established and there, there are plenty of people walking around in the community who have these lenses in at night mm. and don't wear glasses. Mm. Um, what about long-sightedness and for people of my generation, presbyopia, the need for reading glasses? Is there anything coming up for, for us? Well, we have been doing some research because obviously to correct long-sightedness as opposed to short-sightedness, what we need to do is increase the power of the cornea. And we do that by steepening it rather than flattening it. We have uh, done some research on this and have demonstrated this is possible, but only within certain limits. And indeed, these limits actually mean that it's absolutely ideal for people like you and increasingly me who need some sort of correction up close. We're about to um, uh, in, uh, uh, in start a, a major study in which we're going to be investigating lens designs that will uh, create a cre correction during the day for presbyopia so that people could perhaps go without their reading glasses during the day. There's the incidence of, of presbyopia is, is 100%, isn't it? That everybody right. over the age of 45 is going to need reading glasses. Absolutely, basically. yes, yes. So it's, a, it's obviously a, an enormous market out there in terms of uh, uh, potential uh, people who might be interested in this technique. But it is early days and we're doing the preliminary research. We're interested in seeing just how much correction we can get, what the visual quality is like uh, with this correction, how long it takes for this correction to um, establish itself and how stable it is, um, uh, whether it, it, it uh, reverses rapidly or maybe holds in place to allow people to wear the lenses maybe every second night or so. Okay. So it's early days yet. We're, we are looking for people to help us with this preliminary looking for study. volunteers, yes. yes. And yes. they can go to your website on the School of Optometry at UNSW and yes. find out how. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Helen. That's really interesting. It's going to make a big difference to the world. Thanks, Bob.